greetings. I want to welcome you to our online service here at Our Savior's Lutheran in Hastings, Minnesota. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you've been here before, maybe all the way through, we're glad that you're back. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Jesus, we ask for your presence with us today as we worship you. Open our lives and our hearts to you and all that you have to teach us and grow within us. Amen. We believe that it's important to confess our sins and to receive the Lord's forgiveness because this is what God does for us. God does what we cannot do, which is to forgive us of our sins and to break the power of sin in our lives. So I invite you to join me as we confess our sins. I'll be speaking on behalf of all of us and then hear the words of absolution. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, my descendants, from wherever you may. Come, broken hearted, let the rescue begin. Come, find your mercy, O sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow.
Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven. Our gospel for today is from Matthew 11. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you that you give us your word. In fact, that you are the word, that you are life, and that you walk with us through our lives, helping us along the way, leading us forward, being the one who gives us rest. Amen. <clears throat> My dad... My dad grew up in the town of Ely, way up by the Canadian border here in Minnesota. He was born there in 1940, and his dad was born in Ely way back in 1896, just a few years after Ely was founded. When my grandpa was a kid, there was no road that connected to Ely to any other town other than the railroad. Ely was literally on the northern frontier of America. Now, with both my dad and grandpa being born and raised in a town that is still on the edge of the wilderness, I heard a lot of stories about their lives and adventures on Minnesota's frontier. There was the tale telling of when my grandpa helped his cousin put together a kit of a float plane. And I'm not talking a model, I'm talking the real thing. It arrived in town on a flatbed rail car. After they put it together, his cousin tried to learned to fly by reading the instruction manual. Yet when they tried to take off from the uh, waters of Shagwell Lake, my grandpa's cousin looped the plane, flipping it onto the water. It was the shortest flight my grandpa ever took. When my dad would tell of racing to second place in a soapbox derby, I always listened intently. He had built his own derby car, powered by gravity, which he steered down a big hill in Hibbing in heat after heat, just missing out on a trip to Ohio for the national race. But my favorite stories were those of my dad and grandpa fishing, hunting, and traveling through the wilderness on the border by canoe. So when I had the chance in the early 90s to work at a canoe base, leading and guiding youth trips into the Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness, well, I jumped at the opportunity. Pretty quickly, though, after arriving at the camp, I knew that I had a lot still to learn about guiding people on canoe trips. Yeah, I, know how, I knew how to paddle, although I realized after watching the experience guides that I really didn't know how to steer very well. 
I could set up tents, but didn't have the knowledge to correctly hang a food pack to keep it away from the bears. And it took work to learn how to flip a canoe onto my shoulders by myself so that I could carry it swiftly and easily over a rough portage trail from one lake to the next. I needed to learn a lot during that first staff training. Thankfully, at the beginning of that first summer of guiding, we had two staff trips during which we rookie guides learned the ins and outs of guiding teenagers and adults across the lakes and portages of the BWCA. I made sure to watch what the experienced guides did, to listen to any advice they shared, and to ask questions so that I might hear answers from two or three of them and then choose how I would do it. These trips took teamwork, and each group had a lead guide that chose the route and made sure we were learning what we needed to know. On those trips, I learned the importance of a good guide. For a good guide not only makes sure that the youth group didn't get lost, but a good guide also taught each group what they needed to learn. And perhaps most importantly, was there when the going got tough. The guide would share large doses of encouragement and lend a helping hand to the tired or discouraged when needed to make their way easier. Now the reason that I've shared all of this is because Jesus' words from Matthew reminded me of my guiding days. It seems as if Jesus could have been a Boundary Waters guide by the way he is speaking in today's verses. Even down to his use of the word yoke. You see, to portage a canoe, to carry it upon one's shoulders from lake to lake, requires what is called a canoe yoke. A canoe yoke usually has two pads that are attached to the middle thwart of a canoe, the thwart being the metal or wooden pole that holds the sides of the canoes out. When the canoe is flipped upside down over a person's head, the yoke pads land upon the shoulders of the person who will be carrying it. Now, canoes aren't necessarily light, and back in my days of guiding, we used heavy aluminum canoes that ranged from 70 to 80 pounds on our trips. Many kids could only carry them for a little while before they needed to switch with someone and then let the other person carry it. So two people took turns carrying the canoe. They were called yoke fellows, for they were sharing the yoke and thus the load, literally of the canoe, and then one heavy Duluth pack stuffed with gear. They would switch out as they made their way across the portage. Now in Matthew, Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus' words remind me of the experience of a canoe group getting all of their gear across a long portage. How on my staff trips, as I was learning the arts of paddle and pack, and how to lead, to cajole, to encourage, and sometimes even bribe a group of young teenagers from one lake to the next, I needed the encouragement to rest. I needed to hear that it was all right to share my load. I needed to be told that it, w that it was all right to light my load for my new friends, my fellow guides, with help to carry it. And this, my friends, is what Jesus is telling us today, and frankly, every day. We are not alone. We do not have to bear the heavy burdens of all that life throws at us by ourselves. And we don't have to navigate this lake called life on our own. Jesus, the great guide, travels with us. Jesus knows the way through the lakes and portages of life. More than that, Jesus is the one who rescues us from our failures upon the trails and in the dark waters in which we travel. When he talks of lightening our load, I think one of the burdens that Jesus is taking from us is the weight of our sins. Sins that cost us so much, that weigh so heavily upon our hearts that they can bring us to our knees in pain and hurt. When we cry out like Paul did in Romans, wretched man that I am, wretched woman that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Well, we hear the same answer Paul did. Jesus Christ our Lord will rescue us, and does. For he is the rescuer of those burdened with the troubles of life. 
and drowning in the sins that bind us and that we never leave behind here on earth. Jesus is the savior of the weary travelers of life, those whose souls are tired. Jesus gives us what we need in the moment that we might then go on again, forgiven and refreshed by his presence and by his love. Now, I know that many of you have never been on a canoe trip, and so using the experiences of such a trip as the metaphor for our lives with Jesus might not fully hit home. Yet, thinking of any type of trip or journey, one that is not so easy and needs to be traveled with an expert, can help us to understand how Jesus wants us to lean upon him. For Jesus wants us to turn to him in all of our needs, in our weariness, in our hurts, and in our troubles. He wants us to share our burdens with him, for he wants to help us carry them. Jesus wants to lighten our loads by forgiving us of our sins and helping us to forgive others of the sins by which they have hurt us. Jesus wants to be our yoke fellow, helping us across the portages of life. But even more than simply helping us, Jesus wants us to learn from him and to follow him so he can lead us in new ways. Jesus wants us to know, know and experience the joys and wonders too as we walk this road called life. Most, most of us know life isn't e often easy and sometimes it is downright hard. But when walked in the company of our Lord Jesus, it is also filled with wonder, with beauty, with happiness, and with purpose-filled joy. And it is a journey worth walking each day. And life is a journey worth sharing, both here on earth as well as someday for eternity. Jesus knows the way. Let him be your guide, for he is gentle and humble of heart. Amen. voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure Am I more than just the sum of every and every low Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know Oh You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing You say I am strong when I And when I don't belong
Let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church and those in need and all of God's creation. Jesus, you are the answer. You are our great guide. Sin overwhelms us and you rescue us from drowning in the sea of sin. Your love is so great that it covers all. You walk with us, teaching us your ways, guiding us as we are yoked with you that we may help, that you may help us to bear our burdens, that we may know and experience your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the universe, we give to you our troubled world. Bring peace where there is war and violence, understanding where there is miscommunication, forgiveness where there is hurt, love where there is hate, and give us the ability to see each neighbor in the world as the child of God that they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we lift up to you all who are suffering in spirit, mind, or body. We ask that you bring wholeness and healing to David, Eunice, Mary, and all whom we carry in our hearts and on our minds. Give comfort and peace to those who are grieving. Walk with them in their sorrow and give them all that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, call to us who are your church to live as your hands, feet, voice, and heart in the world. Fill us with your spirit and give us your strength that the people of the world may see you in our words and actions as your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who are traveling, vacationing, resting, and working in these days of summer. Rejuvenate us physically, mentally, and spiritually. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your ha hands, gracious God, we give all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and love. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We want to give thanks to everyone who um, supports our ministry here at Our Saviors through the uh, donation of money and finances as well as time, energy, and talent. Let us now have an offering prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that all we have ultimately comes from you and that you provide for not only our needs, but also for our wants. And I ask that you help us then to give back a portion of what you have given to us for your ministry, for the care of others, for the building up of your church, and for the enlargement of faith in our children, youth, and members here at Our Saviors and around the world. We thank you, Lord, for all that is given. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, the few announcements that I want to really give are actually requests. Um, pray that uh, you pray for our children and youth who will be attending camp in the coming weeks, as well as the youth and adults traveling to Colorado Springs on our servant trip 
uh, here in the last week of July. Um, we, prayers for safety, for travel and work and all that's happening, but also prayers that there may, uh, all these youth, uh, children and youth may have a chance to learn and to grow in their faith, to have fun and to uh, create good relationships. Uh, so we thank you for your prayers. And if you have, um, are wondering about anything that's happening here, uh, you can visit us on the website at www.osel.org. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and we welcome you back at any time. Bye-bye.